Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I want to do a quick review over the D-dimer test because as a nurse you're going to be dealing with collecting the D-dimer and you're going to be getting the results. So you want to know what you're looking at and why the physician is ordering this and what they're looking for. So a D-dimer is a blood test that assesses for a certain substance in the blood called fibrin degradation fragment. <laughs> what in the world is this? Well, this is a protein fragment that actually will start to hang out in the blood when there's a clot in the blood that starts to break down. So this tips us off that a clot is somewhere in the body. So it's useful in helping us diagnose blood clots and DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. Because remember, fibrin played a huge role in that clot formation. Because whenever we talked about in our DVT video, we talked about how a blood clot forms. You have platelets that come there to seal off the area, which recruits clotting factors. And clotting factors create fibrin. And fibrin was the one that really causes the big trouble because it's like a strand-like mesh. And it gets together and it collects red blood cells, white blood cells, and even more platelets. And it clumps it together and then we get a clot. So the D-dimer can help assess for that protein fragment. Now there's some shortcomings of this D-dimer test. Number one is it doesn't really tell us where that clot is located in the body. And you can have false positives where the D-dimer is high, but the patient doesn't necessarily have a blood clot. And this is because of maybe a disease process that's going on in the patient, like liver disease, cancer, um, myocardial infarction, after heart surgery, or even pregnancy can cause a high D-dimer. So keep that in mind. So if your patient has a high D-dimer, it needs to be investigated by the physician to really rule out what's going on. Now, what is a normal D-dimer result? Well, whenever you're looking at your patient's results, see how the lab is reporting the cutoff to you. Because some labs will report it in DDUs, which is D-dimer units, while some will report it in FEUs, which is fibrinogen equivalent units, which DDUs and FEUs are the same, they're equivalent, but they just have different cutoff ranges. So a normal D-dimer, if it's reported in FEU, would be less than 500 nanograms per milliliter. And if it's reported in a DDU, it would be less than 250 nanograms per milliliter. So anything higher than these cutoffs would be considered a positive D-dimer that would need to be investigated. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the D-dimer test. And don't forget to check out my other reviews in this series.